What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having uh, a great weekend. It is Saturday uh, evening, and of course, the Senior Bowl has already happened, um, and we'll be talking about some of the prospects and stuff in the coming days. While we deal with everything that is with the Dallas Cowboys right now, what we do know is um, Mike Zimmer, as well as Ron Rivera, are coming in for interviews next week. So we will see what we see with those guys. We don't know if there's any other candidates. Um, I'm curious about um, Al Harris, if he's going to get a chance, because, you know, you would have thought as Dan Quinn is hired um, immediately that he may be going um, with him. And the fact that he is still here at the moment may be that maybe he has a chance to be uh, the defensive coordinator. Although I may say that um, one thing that might be part of the equation is the Cowboys, since Mike McCarthy is a lame duck, that this may be a coach that they look at that they say could take over for Mike McCarthy and be able to get kind of a feel for him whether or not they would want that person to be their head coach. And which is why I think Mike Zimmer may have a better inside track. But I'm going to say that the Cowboys have kind of hamstrung themselves with the way they've made Mike McCarthy a lame duck that I'm not sure that that makes the job attractive for younger coaches because you don't want to come in replacing Dan Quinn that had a really good defense. If the defense goes downhill, the Cowboys don't look good, and they end up having a terrible season, you might not get another opportunity uh, right away to be a head coach or um, a defensive coordinator elsewhere. The thing that drives me crazy is we hear that the Cowboys are going to go all in. They're going to go all in this year and stuff. And talking to um, Brian and the crew and stuff, we just got finished doing our live stream and uh, enjoy talking with all of the, the great people and things. Hearing that the Cowboys don't really want to sign a veteran back. Now, we've already heard that Derrick Henry – um, is very interested in coming with the Cowboys. And I would think that at this point in his career, he's looking for, since he's got a house in Dallas, you know, to be close to home and things and to get that publicity of the Dallas Cowboys and might be more of a um, contract that would be more viable as opposed to trying to break the bank. Uh, that That's what I would think. But this is where I kind of go crazy because this would be, and the Cowboys may not do that. They'll say, no, that's going to be too much money. We'll go young. But when I heard and saw the headlines for this, it was 105 The Fan, G-Bag Nation. They were having a conversation about Bobby Wagner. Now, Bobby Wagner would be an upgrade from what we had this last year, okay? You can't bring a safeties down, you know, a guy that's 210 pounds and think they're going to be able to be a linebacker that's going to be able to drive people backwards. If you believe that, then you really don't need to be running an NFL organization. You know, that's one of those things that will fill in like that, but you can't make a living doing that let's be clear here that was a miscalculation by the cowboys in the same way they miscalculated about running back they have to do more than what they did so here's the conversation about bobby wagner and i will say the thing about bobby wagner is <laughs> bobby wagner was available two years ago when seattle first left him and he's had over 300 tackles in that time but in that time when he wanted to be here, which only cost $12 million is all he ended up making those two years total, not each year total. He's not the same player he was, you know, five years, 10 years ago. And this is a typical move that the Cowboys make. Let's listen here to what Brian Broadus had to say about it. What they could do. Uh, defensively in the off season, and we we mentioned the name Bobby Wagner as a potential veteran linebacker guy. What do you know about the way his game has uh, has gone production wise over the course of the last season or two? He's up there in age a little bit, but is he still close to the same player that he was? I don't think so. I mean, I don't I don't see the the snap reaction time that I see from guys like Fred Warner and Roquan Smith and 
some of the guys are a little younger. I mean, he's played a lot of snaps in his league. He's got well over a thousand tackles. I mean, he's probably a Hall of Fame caliber player. Um, they weren't very good around him in Seattle, so that sometimes makes a difference. He's very smart. Uh, he studies the game well. Uh, I just don't know that you're going to have the speed and the reaction time you need at that position. Uh, I think this is his 12th year coming up. He was drafted in 2011, I believe. So I don't know, or maybe 2012. So it's, it's, it's a lot of football inside that body right there. you got to take a, a long, hard look at just um, – you know, just the way that he's moving right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and another linebacker that's going to be on the market potentially for, uh, you know, out of Baltimore with the Ravens is Patrick Queen. Do you think he will be worth whatever he ends up getting in free agency? Well, he was a much better player the day Roquan Smith showed up than he was before that. Um, he had, and so, you know, he's, he's like linebacker number two in Baltimore, and he played very well in that role. But if you're going to pay him to come in and be uh, the quarterback of your defense and the leader of your defense, he's a little quiet. Um, he plays hard. He's very fast. He does a lot of good things. Um, sometimes you want your Mike linebacker to be loud. You want to be able to hear him in the rafters. And it's not really how he plays. Baldy, yesterday, Jerry Jones, and I hope I'm not putting you to a bad spot here, but I, I believe you know, you're a man of detail. The, the comments that Jerry Jones said about all in, if you had to translate Jerry Jones and all in, what would that be to Brian Baldinger this year? Well, I, I didn't hear the, the press conference, so he was all in as far as he's all in? or Yeah, the, the quote is, we will be going all in. I would say that you will see us this coming year not build it for the future. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, um, I would imagine, uh, I don't know what they're – the books look like right now, they, they're usually right up against the cap. Sure. Um, but that would mean, uh, you know, free agency, we're, we're going for gold, uh, whatever that takes. Uh, the draft, if we have to move up to go get the best player at our spot that we could possibly get to improve our team the most right now, the way Micah did right now, the way some other players that they have drafted um, impacted the team right away. I would say that's what that means, that no, no stone is going to be unturned. Free agency, draft, trades, everything is, on, uh, is, is in the middle of the table mm. to try to improve this team as much as we possibly can before we kick off 2024. There you go. Insider calls are brought to you by Old Spice. All right. So I don't have a problem with Bobby Wagner, but see, this feels like the long list of players past their prime that the Cowboys typically sign. You know, we think about, you know, when they brought in like Clinton Ha Ha Dix and George Alocas and uh, Don Terry Pose and Gerald McCoys and, you know, um, <sighs> players that are names that have had good careers but are way, way old and not the same player. They appease the masses at first because you don't know or realize that they have lost a couple of steps. And we expect the the production that they've had elsewhere. You know, as much as, you know, I would be welcome having Bobby Wagner, Patrick Queen would be a better move spending more money for a guy that has a lot more upside. So this kind of ticks me off when I hear about this because this is the kind of move that we could have done two years ago. Again, he wanted to come here with Dan Quinn. He had two years and less than 300, I mean, 300 less tackles on his body. He would have been more effective there than in there than he would be now. It's cray cray in Dallas. That's all I can say. Peace out.